for you to meet some of the other members of this team because it's not just me. We have been meeting almost every week, researching and studying and analyzing. And I would like for you to meet them so that they can tell you what they feel in their heart. Who would like to go? Julia? Okay. Hi, my name is Julia. Hi, my name is Julia Bryan, and I've been living in Brooklyn for half of my life. And I've loved the Brooklyn Botanical Garden for half of my life. It's amazing. What I want to say is that my part of the research had to do with rent stabilization. And one of the things that happens when a developer comes in is that they can take down a building. And if they can take down a building and prove that they can put up another building, then that building is no longer rent stabilized. And rent, stabiliza rent stabilization goes away for all the people in that neighborhood. And in this development and in parts of other developments, Maybe 200 people, 200 families are going to go away just flat out straight. That's, that's just the bottom line. And so I just want to speak for the people who have been working on rent stabilization team. Thank you. So I, I'm just happy we're all out here today. Um, thank you all for coming. My name is LaShawn. Um, I am awesome. a community member. <laughs> I am awesome. I'm a community member. Um, I am a gardener. I am a lover of my community, a lover of the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. I actually got a lot of my start as a gardener, volunteering at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. Um, I have worked relentlessly to try to keep my community, Crown Heights, affordable for all, truly affordable. Um, there are people my age that have to leave Brooklyn because of all of these insane changes that are going on. And we've created an awesome team here that's just done a lot of research, that's done a lot of work in trying to look at, look deeply at what's going on with all of these developers coming in, trying to change zoning that was put in place to protect our community. And it's been a real honor to work with all of the people that, that I work with. Um, everybody is so passionate. Everybody is really smart, um, and everybody just wants to do what is right, that what is right for the people that live in our community and beyond. Um, so I just want to say thank you to everybody for coming out, and thank you, thank you. <laughs> My name is uh, Janine, and um, I've been working with this group uh, pretty much since you guys started. I've been, we've had a house in Crown Heights for 32 years years now um, and uh, garden members were extremely worried about what we see. Um, when I first heard about the possibility of this community plan being broken, I asked then and I'm going to ask since you're here to hear me, I'm going to ask the same question I always ask which is, we had a community plan made in 1991 based on shadow studies that no one can find or produce. but. My question is, has the relationship between the sun and the earth changed since 1991? No. 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 I don't even understand how, why we're having this discussion. A shadow is a shadow. Is a shadow. All of this has only gotten worse since 1991. Now we have glass buildings that present all kinds of other hazards, including to the migrating birds. And it only, it, it only gets worse. But there's, we shouldn't even this conversation to me should never have gotten it should have never gotten out of the whispering stages because we have a garden we have a world famous garden to protect and we have a beautiful neighborhood to to defend so uh, the only explanation i can give you for why we're even having this discussion is bought and lost <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can find no other explanation because it's nonsense. No, it makes nonsense, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and yet, here we are and having to go to court and have you all come out here. But, you know, we're out here, we're gonna stay out here, we're gonna stay on her and Walter Mosley and everybody else. We elected by just a little bit. They, they, barely, they, barely, they, barely, they, barely, 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 last time, and we, we're not, you know, she, we, she can't run again. Revney bought her. Yeah, Revney bought so, her. But she has, believe me, she has big plans for herself. We're going to dog her wherever she goes, because 
she's bought and bossed. My name is Nick Smith. I'm a uh, tutor at New York City College of Technology. I'm a member of the community. And um, I just want to say that well, I'm very pleased about the uh, restraining order. Um, and uh, I'm absolutely ecstatic about it. I have been all day. I just want to say that um, one of the things that, uh, as I think back of the last few months about um, doing research um, about this whole uh, issue, is um, the sheer magical thinking on the part of the developers and the planners. Uh, um, the law is quite clear that they have to do an environmental impact statement, and they've absolutely um, flouted the law. They, they've disregarded it in, in just a, the most brazen, uh, uh, presumptuous fashion. And um, um, just one thing to quick to say is that whenever there's a storm uh, with regard to uh, sewage, um, especially a major storm, but even a not so major storm, um, the waste treatment plants can't handle all of it, so it winds up going into the uh, waterways of, of our uh, community. Yeah, um, untreated. And untreated. And um, these waste facilities are uh, maxed out, and, and they're having trouble with that. Um, and um, where do the developers think this stuff is going to go? This sewage has got to go someplace, and it goes right into our waterways. Um, so I just think that... Um, they need to be held accountable and to pay attention to the law. And part of it, of the environmental impact statement, is uh, how sewage is going to be handled. Um, and it, 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 just to conclude, they, they have to stop engaging in magical thinking and they have to obey the law. Yeah. That's all I have to say on that. Okay. <laughs> My name is Todd. I work in affordable housing. I joined MTOP because the movement to protect the people because they win, they get results. <laughs> of that. Uh, I'm particularly incensed and outraged at the fact that elected officials want to speak on behalf of or actually speak over this community because this community exactly. already spoke through their exactly. community plan. That's right. yeah, that's they want right. to speak over this community in the name of quote unquote affordable housing and as Alicia already articulated it's just a lie. Ah, when you look ah, at the numbers woo. these apartments are affordable to families earning over a hundred and four thousand dollars. That's not the AMI in Crown Heights. So if we're going to have tough conversations about the sewage we need to deal with, the parking we need to deal with, yeah. the new residents we need to deal with, then let's at least have an honest conversation about the housing that will be rent burdening this community and what plans Woo! our elected officials can come up with so that that won't be the case. Teach talk. Uh, my name is Dr. David Eisenbach. I teach history at Columbia. Uh, over a hundred years ago, uh, a group of concerned New Yorkers who believed in the importance of health and recreation and the environment built the botanical gardens and they left it to us as a public trust mm -hmm. and generations of New Yorkers and generations of New York politicians upheld that trust yeah. but no longer can we trust our politicians and that is why we need Alicia that is why we need MTOP and that is why we need flowers against corruption <laughs> and so thank you ladies for upholding that public trust and defending this great institution of New York, New York Botanical Garden. Thank you very much. Yeah.